Why do I think crypto is the future? Disclaimer, before we even start the video, this is not financial advice. I am not your financial advisor. Whatever you buy is up to you to research and know like crypto and the stock market are can be like gambling if you don't know what you're doing. You can lose a lot of money. So it's important to do some of that research on your own. So let's get back into it. Back into a rewind. Why is crypto the future? Well, in order to print money, it is a very costly exercise. Printing money each year, counterfeiters get a lot better at copying the dollar. And every year they come out with a new version of the $100 bill, the new $20 bill, so that it can be a lot harder to counterfeit. And what is it? So the government has an incentive in order to use crypto. They're done printing money in the future, even in order to use the US dollar, they're going to need to be able to, they're gonna, they're building crypto type systems where money, all the money, like let's say for Bitcoin, all the different Bitcoin that will ever be in existence has already been decided. It is not possible for the government to come along and be able to say, hey, or the crypto owners, right? It's not possible for the crypto owners to be able to come in and be like, hey, we need to pay our debts. We're going to print some more Bitcoin and we're going to devalue what's already there. And that's what governments do. Whenever a government is in trouble, basically by printing more money, they basically rob all the different citizens, right? You're paying taxes already and then they get to get a get out of jail free card for them in case they need to pay off their debts. And that's one of the beauties of something like Bitcoin. Instead of Bitcoin losing money as time goes on, it's actually just gone up in price. If you were a Bitcoin holder back in the day when it was 10 cents, you would literally be a millionaire because it's like if you had a thousand of coins at like a dollar you would be what would you be you'd have 60 million today 60 million so it's like 60,000 times yeah 60 million sounds right you would have 60 million <laughs> you would have 60 million today um so as time goes on and more people pour into Bitcoin, the people who have were early adopters win. It kind of sounds like a Ponzi scheme, right? Like generally in a Ponzi scheme, people try to convince other people to get into the, the scheme and the people at the top make more money and the people at the bottom end up making um the people in the middle make a little bit more money by getting more people. The people at the bottom have to make more money by uh, getting more people involved. And so it does sound like a, a, a Ponzi scheme. However, at the same time, it's decentralized. Whatever coin that you own, it belongs to you. And definitely Bitcoin, you have seen Bitcoin has dropped it's going down, I think from like 50 grand all the way down to like three grand at some point. So it may not be as safe as some people think it is, but as more people get involved, the community becomes a lot more safer. So what if you wanted to hack Bitcoin? What if you wanted to um, take over Bitcoin right now? What would you have to do? Could you rob the Bitcoin bank? Well, Bitcoin, is decentralized. It's not owned by anybody. There is no Bitcoin leader per se. Basically, whoever owns 
51% of all the nodes in Bitcoin is able to decide what is the next block. So what that means, let's say Bitcoin is a $20 billion business, right? If you wanted to hack Bitcoin right now, you would need $20 billion in $1. And let's just say, yeah, $20 billion plus one to try to take over the network. So you have safety in numbers. And let's say a government decided right now, like in China, we're going to ban all Bitcoin usage in our country. Well, Bitcoin is being stored on computers all over the world. So it cannot be taken from anybody completely. It's like saying, if you wanted to destroy, let's say you wanted to, in California, right? They wanted to get rid of all the bears in California. That is possible. That's what you, that is possible when you have a centralized entity, right? If you, somebody said, hey, I wanted to take over Yahoo. It's a lot, it's easy. Taking over Yahoo is hard, but it's a lot harder to say, hey, I want to take over every single computer in this world because that's the difference between, that's the advantage of a system being decentralized and a system being centralized. Like you have way more order and it's way easier to regulate when an industry is centralized. But when it's uh, when the entity is decentralized, it's a lot harder in order to ban it, to regulate it. At the same time, people say that this is what the internet used to be like, right? Back in the day, the internet was supposed to be this decentralized place where people came in order to browse the internet or do store or whatever, do their business, right? But today, 90% of the, the internet goes to about 10 websites which is like the Googles, the Amazons, the, uh, the YouTubes. Those websites take up about 90% of people's time on the internet or 90% of the traffic. So Bitcoin does have the potential to become more entity based. However, I still believe that crypto is the future because we have it's decentralized. It's definitely the way that we can have more, more ownership of our data. Like remember when we talk about things such as Google, Google's ability to track us, to be able to own a piece of our data. Back in the day, Google could store everything that we've ever searched in our entire life. They might store it in a database and they could look it up, right? They have all this information about us because we are the product in a blockchain in the blockchain world we will be the owners of our data we will be able to hide who we are right we can hide necessarily what we'd like to look on the internet right we can hide our illegal hacking activities we can hide you know um looking at the basket looking at streaming basketball games illegally we can hide some of that information a lot better in a blockchain decentralized world we could necessarily here's an application of bitcoin that we talked about in my class we might be able to necessarily buy rent a home for a day without the owner even knowing who we are these are the things that are possible with blockchain and these things, although today um, they may not, they sound far fetched, but in the future, in a world where the government is able to seize and take control and follow us and take our information, like you've seen the government ask Google to hand over information about a certain crime um, in order for them to investigate. Well, in a decentralized world, the government will not have that ability if we own our own data. And so these are the many different reasons why I feel like Bitcoin is the future or cryptocurrencies are the future, whether Bitcoin or whatever coin that you're into. Um, 
is the one that we use to send information around, then um, I don't know. I don't know what coin is going to become. It's going to break into the mainstream. None of these coins are very mainstream at this moment. I think Bitcoin is a household name, but it's not something I never, unless you are a Bitcoin enthusiast, this is the only way that you're going to um, see somebody try to spend money on Bitcoin. And so spend money using Bitcoin. It's a real pain in the butt, like storing information and money and stuff. It's, it's, it's a real pain. And I think that's something that the blockchain is going to need to overcome in order to cross over into the mainstream. So let's look into my crypto account. Let's see, I'm just looking at the comments for a second. Let's take a look at my crypto account. Let's see. Oh, I don't want it to be that big. There we go. So you can see I have $47,000 in my different crypto assets. And the majority of that, you'll see it is in Ethereum. I'm bigger into Ethereum than I am into Bitcoin. I actually don't think I own any Bitcoin just because I have a lot more money to make in Ethereum than I do in Bitcoin. So why am I bullish on Ethereum and maybe bearish on Bitcoin? I would say Ethereum, you can see Ethereum right now. If you wanted to buy one Ethereum, let's take a look. Ethereum right now is four grand, around four grand. We'll round it up, four grand, right? Ethereum has a lot longer to go in order to get to the highest. Like if you want to buy one Bitcoin right now, it'd be 60 grand. So Bitcoin doubled in price right now, you would make 120,000, right? And it'll get there eventually, but Ethereum has a lot longer to go, right? It could double, it could triple, it could multiply by 10. So Ethereum could be necessarily the bigger coin other than Bitcoin. I don't think Ethereum is probably, probably never going to be as much as it's never going to surpass Bitcoin in price because Ethereum can be, there's a lot more, there's an unlimited amount of Ethereum, right? They can make new Ethereum. And then on top of that, the thing about Ethereum is that anytime a smart contract is Anytime a transaction is processed, Ethereum burns a little bit of that so that it can never be used again. And so that's the way they kind of keep some of the, the, the currency from diluting in value is that every transaction on the blockchain is, is burned a little bit. So before I, I forgot to mention that. What is a blockchain? If you don't know what that is, I would simply say that a blockchain is like a ledger. Like anytime somebody wants to necessarily buy something or store something, they're writing a book like Rami just bought $20 or just used $20 worth of Ethereum for X, Y, and Z. They record that information. And once it is written to the block, it is there forever. And so just like I said, how to hack Bitcoin, like all the nodes are racing in order to figure out what is, what is the, who gets to decide the next block. And so you see things like Bitcoin actually has, if Bitcoin was a country, it would be eighth or ninth in the world as far as consuming electricity because yeah, in order to decide what the next block is, like computers kind of play this game of like who can guess the right number in order to figure out like who, who and whoever guesses the right number gets to decide, gets to do the next block. So it's it's a race. Basically, if you have more computers doing the race, it's, it's you're more likely to get that block. And if you have less computers, it's less likely but it is still possible. 
and so and sometimes it's split between multiple um but yeah this is that's basically the blockchain but back into this right ethereum has a lot longer to go um when it comes to to necessarily raising its value and unlike bitcoin bitcoin was the first blockchain ethereum came a little bit longer after that but ethereum ethereum's claim to fame is it has smart contracts which is the ability for programmers such as me to be able to write code and write apps and have a business around the blockchain and what you see what do people use the blockchain for at this point generally the main use case for the blockchain is to create cryptocurrency right you can see another coin that i own is shib which is kind of like the doge coin fanatics right it's a cryptocurrency within doge in order to it's a cryptocurrency in the ethereum ecosystem right somebody decided to create a business inside of the ethereum ecosystem like shib and that's one of the main things that you can do with ethereum that you can't do with Bitcoin. There's nobody that can create a Bitcoin business by using smart contracts. Like if you want a Bitcoin business, you would have to be a miner. You don't have necessarily some of the newer uh, ideas such as like NFTs or something. But I think you can't, don't take me like, I think you probably can do NFTs and have transactions and like, the Bitcoin ecosystem is more, what is it? It wasn't built for these things, but people are still making new ways, still adding features to Bitcoin to this point. So with Ethereum, um, you see here, um, we have the ability to create our own business from Ethereum very easily. And then we have the Ethereum ecosystem right now, you just want to through a upgrade in order to make it more scalable and safer for the environment. So Ethereum is a lot better for the environment than Bitcoin because it uses a concept called proof of stake. Proof of stake is basically instead of having to be able to take control of the ecosystem by having a 51% stake in the, in the ecosystem, in order to hack Ethereum, you would need to put up in order to get one node of Ethereum right now, it's probably about like, I think it's 10 E. So we're going to say it's about 40 grand to get one node. And so let's say the whole entire uh, is doing that balloon thing again. But hopefully you can still hear me. In order to get one, in order to get to hack Ethereum, let's say the ecosystem is 40 billion. Somebody would have to put up $41 billion in order to hack Ethereum. And if they lose, if other nodes discover, hey, you're trying to hack this ecosystem, then Ethereum will burn that money. It will burn, it will slash that node. And so that person, like unlike Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin, if you try to hack Bitcoin and you fail, you get to try again. If you try to hack Ethereum and you fail, like you lose all your money. And so this proposition makes it a lot more safe. Ethereum was built with security in mind first. It was not built like, let's say Solana for scalability. It was built for making sure that the ecosystem is protected. So what is another use case for Ethereum? I think one of the bigger known ones is NFTs, which is the ability to mint, or let's say, hmm, like if you're an artist, right? Or let's say I'm a rapper and I want to not be with a label. I want to sell my mixtape and I want to give, I want to sell my mixtape like it's a stock, right? Like let's say Tupac comes back in the day and he's all like, hey, I know I'm not big right now, but if you buy my mixtape and I become successful, then this mixtape, you can sell it to somebody else and you become a millionaire. That's something that rappers can do to take the power from, 
from the industry, right? Like if we look in the rap industry, they always talk about how ruthless it is to work, to be in business with some of these guys. Well, if you never have to sign the deal, if you can have your community, like if you can sell your mixtape for a hundred dollars, right? You might not even be that good, but my hundred dollars could turn into a million if you get on, then that is something that I might be willing to spend a little bit more money so that I can have a stake in your business. And so you're already seeing rappers like Tory Lanez and uh, Nas do this with their with their mixtapes. They're selling the rights to their users or their fans so that they have a stake in the business and they can generate money. Why isn't this happening today? Well, in order to put an NFT, it's kind of a pain in the butt. But this is why crypto is the future. And right now, AI coins are big. So, again, this is not financial advice. You got to do your own research. Right now, the feds are saying it is very likely this year that we are going to have a recession. So there's a part of me that thinks to myself, hey, let me do a close up on myself. There is a part of me that's thinking maybe I should sell everything right now, right? And that's true, right? Like, if, if, if there's a recession, this stuff, my 40 grand, I remember I had 40 grand in this and it went all the way down to, actually, let me give you guys a look at my like lifetime earnings over like my entire life. So let's see. You see, I was up to like, 38 grand at one point, right? I was up to 38 grand and this stuff went all the way down to like eight grand. So do not play with cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrencies are not like stocks. Stocks tend to be more safe. Crypto seems to be more, you can win big and you can lose big too. And so you see it draft, it came back up eventually and you see like a big boost in the last month. This stuff could go all the way back down this entire year. And I think that's one of the beauties about me being a software engineer is that <laughs> I have money that I can just invest. Like the way that you invest is that you spend 10% of what you have into something like Ethereum and Bitcoin right now. And you can do it on a, a DC or a centralized exchange like Coinbase or Binance. Once I get the bit, uh, the Ethereum link, then I will share it in the description. But yeah, I do most of my crypto training on Coinbase. It's very simple. Help you out with the taxes as well. Uh, I can't really say what the experience is like on Binance, but you can't go wrong with any of those big ones. And I think that is it. Oh yeah, one more thing that I want to mention. What if crypto gets hacked, right? How, what, the what, the bad thing about using a decentral or a centralized exchange, right? It's a bigger target. If somebody hacked Coinbase right now, they could steal all of this money from me. So Coinbase is kind of like a bank for me right now, they can get robbed at any moment. The beauty about crypto, right? The beauty of crypto is I can have a wallet where I hold that money. I hold the password to that wallet and I keep it off chain. I would do this for my Ethereum, right? Most of my money is in Ethereum. I would do this, but my Ethereum is staked right now. So I would have to, I'm earning interest on the money being staked right now. I get a little bit more Ethereum based upon how long it's being staked. Um, let me think. So I cannot hold it in a wallet, but if I had my crypto in a wallet and Coinbase has their own wallet app, if Coinbase gets robbed, then it does not necessarily mean that I get robbed. At the same time, if Coinbase does get robbed, I have insurance on my money. 
they will guarantee up to like 50 grand. So you don't have to worry. I think it's a lot more than that. Like Coinbase insurance. Let's see. Let's look it up right now. How much do they insure on crypto theft? Yeah, it's not 50 grand. They, they do up to 250,000. So if I ever get up to 250,000, then I'll think about maybe taking some of that money off. But generally your money is safe. Um, unless you're like, yeah, if you're making, if you got band spans, then um, definitely consider moving that money into a wallet. But if you're like me, Coinbase should be good enough in the worst case scenarios. And that, my friends, is my spiel on cryptocurrencies. Thank you so much for watching the video to the entirety. Every single time you like, subscribe, and comment, this really pushes the channel forward and helps us get to our goals. I really wanna just say thank you. And if you are hating, it's all good. The hating helps too. Peace.